All right, so we finally reached our top layer, which is the web layer over here. So this one's really responsible for the REST mapping, so defining the REST API, and also just handling the requests that come into these REST endpoints, and then preparing the responses. So in this video, we'll create our first proper controller, which um, enables this first endpoint that we're working towards that allows us to retrieve all the banks. So back in our IDE, we're gonna go ahead and create a new package. And this one, as you might think, we can call a controller. You can also call it something like resources is quite common, um, but really controller is I think more easy to understand now, especially when getting started. So in this, we're gonna create our bank controller. And just like we did with the hello world controller, I'm already gonna go ahead and add the rest controller annotation, which will also tell Spring Boot to, well, consider this as a bean. So it's gonna be part of the application context, which will also be relevant for our testing purposes. Okay, but this is all I wanna do here for now, because again, we're gonna first create our test class for it. Again, of course, using JUnit5, click OK. And now this time we're gonna do something quite different because we're not gonna be testing pure POJOs by creating the objects ourselves. Instead, we're gonna make use of Spring Boot's testing capabilities, or at least some of them. So here I'm gonna add the Spring Boot test annotation and this will trigger Spring Boot to initialize the entire application context and even start up the actual application for these tests. So always keep in mind when you use Spring Boot test that it's also somewhat expensive. So what we're doing here is really an integration test that will take maybe a second or two to set up the application context. Of course, the application is very simple and there aren't too many beans to initialize for Spring. But generally, when you're using this Spring Boot test annotation, you should be aware of its costs, simply because it uh, initializes the whole application context. There are so-called test slices, which only initialize a certain part of your application. And there are some other ways to restrict which beans are initialized and which you need for your tests. But for now, we're just going to use Spring Boot test as the easiest way to get started. Now inside this test class, I wanna create an object of type mock MVC. So I'm gonna also call this one, let's say mock MVC, and it's gonna be of type mock MVC, which also comes from the Spring Boot started test. So you should already have it in your class path. So this one should only be used in tests. It allows you to make requests to your REST API without actually issuing any HTTP requests, which of course is faster. So it basically hooks in one layer below, the layer in which Spring Boot usually receives the requests and then it delegates it to a controller. But there's no actual HTTP request that's being made here. And now in order to tell Spring Boot to give us a bean of this, ob of this object when we run the test, we're just gonna use the auto-wired annotation. And this is now Spring Boot's uh, way of doing dependency injection. So it's gonna be responsible for initializing a object of this type and then just um, assigning it to this variable. And this is why also I've used late init var. This is a way in Kotlin to say that this variable is a late initialized variable. So we know that some kind of framework is responsible for injecting this object and it will be initialized at a later point. We're gonna refactor this uh, later on, but for now this will give us a bean of this type. Well, actually there's one more thing we need. So the Spring Boot test annotation will only initialize your own application beans. In order to get a mock MVC as well, we need the configure mock MVC annotation on our test class, and then we can use an object of it. So with this being done, let's actually just um, add an empty test. So again, using JUnit Jupyter, and well, later on, we want to make sure that it should return all banks. So that's what the endpoint should do. But for now, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and run this test class and just see if it comes up with any errors when initializing our mock MVC object. 
All right, so far so good. The test passes and there seems to be no issue when initializing this object. Let's actually see what happens if we remove this auto configure mock MVC annotation. So when we do this, you can see there's an error and it says there's an error creating a bean with name bank controller test. And this can happen quite often, this kind of error message in Spring Boot. Whenever Spring Boot isn't able to initialize the entire application context, so usually this means there's some kind of bean missing that it cannot initialize, or maybe there are conflicting beans, so multiple of the same uh, type, and Spring Boot doesn't know which one you want. And here it of course then says unsatisfied dependency expressed through the field mock can we see. And just so you know, when you get this, you can also scroll down and then it says no qualifying bean of type something else. So here it's the mock can we see and this will go down the entire hierarchy. So if there are multiple beans like mock can we see, this one cannot be initialized because of some other bean C. It would show this further down, further down, further down. And then you get to the root cause or the root object or bean that couldn't be initialized. So that's just really important to know if you're working with Spring Boot because this kind of um, error can come up quite often. But then if we're just using auto configure mock can we see here, we have no problem and get our mock can we see. So now it's time to learn how to use this mock can we see object. Now, one thing you might be wondering about, hey, what about the bank controller? We don't really have a bank controller object yet that we can test. Well, remember that the Spring Boot test annotation basically just starts up the entire application. So what we're doing now is we're testing against the actual REST API. So we don't really need to have an object of this type. Instead, we really make tests to our REST endpoint. So let's just see how this works. So we have our test case here saying it should return all the banks. And now let's go ahead and make this get request. So mock can we see, and then you can have get, you can have post, put, delete, and so on for all types of uh, rest requests. So we're going to use get because this is a get endpoint. And we're going to make our request to our API banks endpoint. And then what's really useful is you can say and do and then just print, which will give you all kinds of information about the request, the response, and it's really useful to investigate what's happening in the tests. And then for now, let's just say and expect that the status is okay. So you can check for all the HTTP status codes like 404 not found or here it's 200 okay. So you might be familiar with some of those numbers. Here, of course, we want that we just get an OK. And note that this syntax here relies a lot on Lambda expressions. So this is a Lambda expression, also this one in the curly braces, that you might know already from other languages using functional programming. And this is just the Kotlin API that Spring Boot offers for the mock can we see. Inside the status here, you could also make uh, multiple assertions. Well, for the status, it doesn't really make much sense because there can only be one status. However, you can also do this for, let's say, the end expect. So here, besides status, we'll also check the content later on. But for now, let's just check that the status is okay and that will be enough for now. But this is not a given block. In fact, when using mock can we see it's a bit hard to distinguish. So I like to just use when then. Really, if you want to split it up, then this would be the when block. Uh, the do is really just for debugging purposes. And then you could also do it like this and basically split it up. But I don't really like this syntax too much, so I just keep it together. You could also assign the result of this call to a variable and then make assertions down there. So it's really a matter of taste and uh, how you want to do it. For now, let's go ahead and rerun the test. Okay, so mission accomplished. We have our failing test. Let's see what it says. Well, first of all, we have all our debug output from the print. So you can see it performs a get request to API banks. Doesn't really have any parameters or headers or any, any request body, but it's really nice to look in here and see what's happening. And then if you scroll down further, well, you can also see um, 
that's the request again, but here's the response. And it says 404, which means not found because currently we do not have this endpoint yet, the API slash banks. So in the end, it fails at the assertion because it's expecting a 200, which is the status code for OK, but it gets a 404, which is the status code for not found. So again, remember, we have our red green refactor cycle and we're now at the point where we have a red, a failing test. So let's try to make this one uh, green. And in the bank controller, you basically have everything that you need to make this test green. So I challenge you to do this. Take a look again at what we did in the Hello World controller in the very beginning and try to use the same annotations like the request mapping. This is also a get endpoint, so just like the Hello World. So please pause the video here and take a minute to try this and then I'll show you the solution. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is add our um, request mapping up here. So request mapping. And so the bank controller's base path is gonna be slash API and then banks. So any endpoint below this one will also be below API slash banks. And then we have a get mapping. And this one I'm simply gonna call get banks. And this will return a list or let's say even a collection of our bank entities. And it's quite simple because it doesn't really require any parameters or information from the outside. And then it can just call the service dot, I think we called it also get banks. However, we don't have this bean yet. So let's go ahead and create this in our primary constructor. So a service of type bank service. And this one obviously can be private because it's only used inside this controller. And then let's try and rerun the tests again and see what happens. All right, looks like this is actually all that we needed. And now that I think about it, I actually did too much already. So <laughs> let's drive this back uh, for a second. For now, let's just say works. And we're not returning a collection of banks yet, but just a string because the test really just wants a status code of 200 on this API bank endpoint for now. So let's just try to get that one green. And as you can see, this is enough to do that. But now let's go into our test again and add a few more um, assertions or expectations here. So oftentimes you're working with JSON responses and what you can do there is you can use JSON path and then pass in the expression that basically goes down the JSON object that's being returned. So for now, let me just give you the example and then we'll understand exactly how this works in a second. So here I'm saying that I wanna look at the root object. So this is really the entire response basically. And because I know that this will be returning a list, I wanna access the first element in this list and I wanna look at the account number field. And now for this one, I'm expecting that the value should be A, B, C, D, E, F, because that's what I set for the first object. And actually I can move this into one line. I find this more readable. And you could do the same to get the second bank in the list or the third one, or if you want the uh, trust, if you want to check about that, you can also do it like this. So JSON path is a well-defined specification that you can look up, but it's really easy to kind of get, a, get the hang of it and at least write a simple queries like this one. If you have composite objects, you can of course also go down um, and just access any field down the object like this. So it's quite easy and quite useful for these kinds of tests. And actually there's one more thing I wanna test even before this, which is that the content has a content type of application JSON. So here I'm just asserting that I get a response that has the application JSON header. So I'm getting JSON data. And once I have asserted this, I then look at the JSON object. All right, so obviously this should fail again now. So let's take a look. And then let's take a look at the error message. So we get our debug output here. And then it says the content type uh, was expected to be application JSON, but it was just plain text. 
So let's go ahead back into our endpoint. And now actually, if we just uh, move this back to returning the list of banks from the service, I believe it will automatically be set to application JSON by Spring because it's then using the object mapper to transform it. But we're still getting an error, so let's see what's happening. Um, so the account number seems to be one, two, three, four. So let me check again in our mock data source. And indeed, um, this was what I used in my preparation code, the ABCDEF, but it's still good because we made sure that our assertion is working as it should. So that's perfect. We can just try to fix the test and make it green. And there we go, we have a green test again. We're now actually asserting that we get a status code of okay. We get a response with the content type of application JSON. And we check that the first bank's account number is 1234. Now, of course, you could be checking uh, as much as you want here. You can be checking the account number, the trust, the transaction fee of each element or you could just um, check the entire object at once. Let's also take a look here in our debug output to take a look at the response now. So now we can see we have a status code of 200 here. We have content type application JSON. Again, this is coming automatically from Spring Boot in newer versions, where if you're returning a object that's being mapped by the Jackson mapper, so that's the object mapper that Spring Boot uses internally, um, when you give it a list of banks or a bank, it will use that to transform it to JSON and then send it as the response. And it will also set this then automatically. Um, and then we have the body with the three banks. Feel free to extend this test case and make it more comprehensive. But what I want to show you here mostly is how to work with Mock MVC as well as using Spring Boot test for integration tests like this. So now with this one, we're actually using our bank controller, we're using the bank service, our bank data source, and all our layers are working together to create this response here. All right, so that's your first proper endpoint. So actually now if you start the application again, we can also take a look at this in the browser and in Postman. So now in the browser, I can go to localhost on port 9000. And then, well, on the root URL, we still get our index.html. But if I now go to API slash banks, we can see, well, the browser, in this case, Firefox, even shows it in a nice way. Um, you get the JSON response with three elements and each have their account number, trust and transaction fee. You can also look at the raw data um, but it's really nice that it has this visualization. Now, similarly, you can open up a tool like Postman and then here it's the same thing. So I think this base URL is localhost 8080. So let me change this one actually. So manage environments. I have this local environment with my um, base URL, which is quite useful, but I've changed it in the config. So localhost 9000 slash API. This way you don't have to type it again all the time. And then slash banks should be our endpoint. And there we go, we have our response here. And a tool like Postman of course gives you much more control than the browser. Um, as soon as you have post, put, delete and so on, in fact, it's gonna be really hard to do this in the browser, but a simple get endpoint without any parameters or request body is really easy uh, to also look at in the browser. We'll see that we'll be using Postman for our other request types because it allows you to also define the request body and so on very easily. All right, so that's it for this video. You now know how to use Spring Boot test and how to use Mock MVC to write integration tests in Spring Boot. And of course, how to write your controllers that call a proper service. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like and also take a look at my links in the description down below. And I'll see you again in the next video.